Appropriately wearing his red jacket for this evening. Thank you. <laughs> do we have any closed session report? Uh, item four. And no, Mr. Mayor, we do not. We'll move on to adoption of the agenda. And I know that we do have one item that has been requested to be postponed. Uh, if I could ask the town clerk to uh, mention the, the amendment to the agenda. Thank you, Mayor. We uh, staff has received a request for agenda item 9A, the Mueller duplex use permit amendment, and the applicant is requesting that this item be postponed for an undetermined amount of time. With no other changes to the agenda, is uh, there a motion to adopt the amended agenda? Move is uh, uh, move to adopt as amended. Uh, agreed. Approved. Second. Second. <laughs> you can tell we haven't met for a while. Uh, all in favor? Me, like, uh, Aye. Say something. Aye. Mayor and Council, just briefly, uh, as you alluded to, uh, we do have a unique circumstance tonight with two council members out of, uh, out of town. As a result, uh, a number of perfunctory votes tonight will require unanimous consent of the three of you in order to meet quorum requirements. In this particular case, um, any public hearing item item approving a resolution or an item approving a ordinance will require a majority of the quorum which is five so that would mean three or in this case a 3-0 vote so if there's a 2-1 vote on any item then that is a no pass no action taken that would be correct okay. town attorney and you want to add to that there well that is correct with the uh, actually that is correct. in terms of our agenda tonight i think that applies to all of our items yes. is that including consent that is correct okay we'll proceed with that understanding uh, moving on to public comment so this is a time for members of the public to speak on anything that we do not have on our agenda and I know that we do have a member of our community here wishing to speak welcome good evening my name is Carla Reif R-E-Y-F-F -F. I live at 11 Forrester Lane in Yountville in response to a recent column by our town manager, Steve Rogers, wherein he urged us to complain thoughtfully, I'd like to offer the following neighborhood observations directly to the town council as food for thought that you might want to consider at some future time. The first thing I'd like to bring up are the streets in Washington Park. Um, about nine months ago, I brought the, to the attention of uh, Steve that uh, the, the newly paved streets in Washington Park were really covered with grit and were not, a lot of people were having problems with them. And I found that walking on them and tracking the grit into my house was really um, troubling. And in fact, one time someone took a, a bottle of wine out of the back of my car, put it on the street, brought it into the house, put it on my table. I have a big gash in the middle of my table from the grit on the street that was on the bottom of the box. So. Um, Steve pointed out that other areas in town had been similarly paved and that it would probably balance out within about a year after the rains came and people drove on it, et cetera, et cetera. Well, from my point of view, it's been getting worse. And different spots in that area are worse than others. I, I think that you have all, um, John Dunbar, you have cement in front of your house, I believe. You don't really have the grit right near your front, front of your house. So anyway, so some spots are worse. And it seems at the end of Forrester Street on the east side where I live, the, the grit keeps getting washed down there on a daily basis. And uh, I have a little sample here. You want to put it in the record. Very easy to get. All I had to do was just go out and brush it up. I could have brought you boxes of this stuff. So this is what we're talking about. And um, it does affect my house, and I've noticed other people in the area vacuuming the grit up. So it, it is a problem, and it hasn't gotten better after the rains and the time has gone on. And then now I've noticed after the hot weather last week that there's tar seeping up through the cracks, and that uh, the cracks that were there before are more eroded. The street is worse than it was a year ago when you had the job done. So um, the solution might be to have the company that did the job come in and really sweep it through. I notice when the town goes through uh, and sweeps it, all they do is kind of stir it around and then it comes back. Maybe they should go in and sweep it, sweep it through and, or clean it up, or um, maybe you're still under guarantee and warranty, I don't know. But definitely, if you're ever going to do this anywhere else, please think twice before using this company. They really did a terrible job. And um, you, you, you'll notice, John, if you go out and walk down at your end of the street. It's changed in the last couple of weeks because of the heat. 
So that was my first item I wanted to point out. And as long as we're talking about Washington Park, I wanted to point out that on Forrester Lane, where I live, uh, in the one block from the house next door to me to the end of the block, there are 11 homes that are not occupied. They're, they're not rentals, they are vacation homes. And sometimes the people come once a year. I'm not complaining that they're renting them out, but I'm just saying that they're vacant. And that might be something to consider when you're talking about the population of Yountville, how many people don't live here, particularly in Washington. And there's a lot more in Washington Park than just on Forrester. That's just on our end of the street. Um, I wanted to bring up a little something about the pool. I was disappointed that you raised the fees for the children as of July 1st. They went up a dollar, and I feel that that was probably unnecessary. The pool's never going to make money. The dollar that you collect from the kids in terms of this town's budget and the money that you draw in is, is, is nothing. And I think it's kind of unfair to the children who live here who probably need the pool the most that they're being sort of taxed on using their own pool. Um, and also, I'm a little disappointed that you have to close the pool on Labor Day. I know I brought this up a couple of years ago and you weren't able to get lifeguards after Labor Day, but it seems that September is our hottest time of the year. It's the time we need the pool the most. And if there was some way you could find lifeguards to work maybe just on weekends in September, try it out if it gets hot like it did last week to have some use of that gorgeous pool instead of having it sit up there with no one there using it. It really is a lovely facility. And last but not least, a very small item, but nonetheless, um, if you happen to not have a copier in your home, which I bet all of you do, or if you don't, you have use or access to one here, you're not aware of the fact that our one copier for the public in the ranch market is gone. We do have a copier in the library, but that's only open three days a week. And there are people in this town, lots of little old ladies, who need to make the occasional copy or two and um, all of a sudden they have to go to Napa to do it, if it happens to be on a day the library is closed, and they don't drive. So it is kind of a burden. I was going to suggest if there was some way, I don't know how, you could consider maybe that people who live here who can prove they live here can, if they don't abuse the privilege, use some of the town's, copier, town's copiers and pay the 15 cents or whatever it is, just as a, a sort of a little bonus for living here from your town. Those are my suggestions and comments, and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Well, I appreciate that, and I know staff was vigorously writing down comments for you hit several of our departments with some of your concerns, so I appreciate you bringing up those, those sure. issues. I just know personally on your first item, I have already been having a few conversations with town staff about the street conditions in Washington Park in particular, and having to go on Forrester every every day I yeah. enter and leave my my home I know what you're talking about and we're looking at at what the options are that we have um, you know we can't really go into too many details sure, now but I appreciate you bringing up yeah. these issues but just know that we are looking at the conditions of the sure. surface alternatives if they are appropriate if there's any uh, remedy with the contract. I hope you do. I don't think it's type. been quite a year yet, so maybe you still have some kind of a guarantee. But, I don't know. but Graham and, and Steve and the rest of the public works team are very aware of it and we're looking into alternatives. Thank you. One last very brief comment. You might notice in front of my house I feed the birds a lot. And what I have noticed when I throw this bread out there, something in the bread when it gets wet sort of keeps the grit down. That's my solution, my temporary solution. And do you okay. want this for the record? Sure. Thank you very much. Are there any other members of the public that have any other comments or concerns tonight? No, with that, I'll uh, move on from our public comment portion. Um, and we're going to move on to our consent calendar. And did we have any particular items that needed to be pulled from the consent calendar? No, we do not. Okay. If there, uh, again, we need to just uh, uh, a reminder that we need a. Um, Anyway, as well. Can I miss, uh, I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the consent calendar. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 There we go. Our first, second first official 3 0 there we go. vote. Okay, well, we're going to move on to presentation. Recognition of Wa Rob Wennerberg for his service on the Zoning and Des Design Review Board. And I'll ask Rob if you could please join me at the podium so I could uh, present you with a little token of our appreciation for your, year, your years of service. Uh, 
I'd just like to um, read this plaque that we'd like to give to you uh, from the town of Yountville. Rob Winterberg, in appreciation of your service on the Zoning and Design Review Board, June 16th, 2009 through July 19th, 2012, on behalf of the Yountville Town Council and staff. Thank you very much for your service. Just briefly, for those people who don't know out there, we went from having uh, two Robs and three Bobs at our ZDRB uh, meetings <laughs> to now having two Jasons, two Bobs, and a Rob. So just so it's easier for everybody to differentiate. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. And also, Rob, just a reminder that you get to take that little cover with you as well. Thanks very much. You've been a great asset to, uh, to the ZDRB, and we'll miss you, but I know you'll You'll still be with us in spirit every one of those Tuesday nights. Okay, we're going to move on to item 9B. A reminder, uh, 9A has been pulled by the applicant's request. So we're going to move on to 9B, which is the wayfinding sign program. And we have two parts to this. First is the introduction and first reading of the ordinance. And the second part is consideration for an adoption of the uh, resolution amending the master fee schedule. So uh, we'll please start with the staff report. Thank you. The ordinance that was included in your packet summarizes the direction and the discussions of the business community and town council for the wayfinding sign program and incorporates it into an additional section to our sign ordinance uh, that gets added by this uh, ordinance and also the resolution adds two fees, administrative fees associated with the program that are the uh, initial application fee and the annual subscription fee, renewal fee, for the subscription program. Uh, the ordinance is fairly short. Uh, we'll go through it. If you have any questions, we can cover those. Um, so uh, that's what this is, uh, this public hearing is a about and it's also uh, the recommendation is to adopt we received a letter of support from Jan Factor of the marketplace that's in your packet if you have any questions about the ordinance I'd be happy to answer them yeah I was going to just uh, mention that letter when we got to the public comment portion but there was a letter uh, from Jan Factor managing general partner of the marketplace specifically uh, supporting the program and commenting that the majority of shop owners uh, also have demonstrated support so that's a letter from Jan Fector. I would also uh, like to add that uh, some comments about the um, letter we've sent out and uh, the application for the subscription program and um, give you a summary of what's happened there the we've sent out <clears throat> a total of 72 uh, made 72 contacts with businesses and received about 40 responses back uh, in app applications for the program and that represents about 150 sign plaques at this point uh, there are many of these businesses have expressed an interest in additional sign plaques beyond the basic four so uh, the number could easily approach 200 very quickly uh, these will be on the 13 post locations that we identified in the um, application uh, one thing uh, we did learn from the response to the application is that, and as you can see in that table that was included in the staff report showing the distribution of the 13 posts and uh, the frequency of, of uh, interest at each one, um, we'll most likely be consolidating at least one of the posts um, due to lack of interest um, at that particular location. So, uh, and also, interestingly, the post at the point uh, turned out to be the most popular uh, location, uh, probably because it's at a crossroads. And we've got quite a few uh, responses interested in that location. Out of uh, the 11 hotels, we received um, applications from five of the hotels. Um, we, 17 of the applications are from the marketplace alone. We have. Uh, some tasting rooms that we are going to, well, we're going to be contacting a number of additional businesses to ensure everybody understands the program and, and uh, make sure that they get their application in if they're interested. 
uh, we've only had uh, four of the tasting rooms respond out of the 15. Um, we've received applications from eight of the 15 restaurants. So uh, pretty good um, response so far, but we will be contacting the uh, businesses that have not responded as well as the ones that have. We're going to uh, be contacting the applicants to ensure um, their locations are correct, uh, that their text that they've submitted on the sign is correct. Some of them we need to discuss their descriptions uh, with to make sure they stay within the perimeters of the program guidelines. Um, also, one thing we also learned is the, um, done a study of what they have put down for their requested name of their business and that gave us some good information on the width of the either the width of the plaques got to increase or we've got to adjust the text size some of them are a little longer than we um, anticipated and also we need to uh, make sure they understand um, the directional arrow is indicating as you approach a business it's we can't show an arrow behind so we Make sure uh, they understand that aspect of the program. Okay. Any <coughs> questions about the report, Councilmember Muller? Um, actually, it's a question that's in the uh, ordinance number 406-12. Under section B4, it says the business must be open on weekends. Is that Saturday and Sunday, Saturday or Sunday? I just thought, you know, we might want to clarify that okay some people thought if I'm open on Saturday and not Sunday I can't join so just a thought we can stipulate Saturday and Sunday but the one below it uh, allows some exceptions um, to that so to if somebody's that closed on Sunday they can still participate yes depends on the nature of course they otherwise have to comply with the categories of businesses that are right eligible right and there's, there's it doesn't explicitly say you have to be open the entire weekend but I understand there might be some interpretation left I think so Bob you're saying that I that what this says now is they should be open Saturday and Sunday that would imply that and we can be clear our uh, at least one weekend day if you wish uh, to amend that that's fine with me one weekend day at least Saturday or Sunday mm -hmm. if that's the intent mm -hmm. of the language that might clarify it yeah that'd be fine okay. Councilmember Hall yes sir. Are, Councilmember Muller any other questions of staff <laughs> no. nope that's good <clears throat> hey uh, Bob just a quick question so I believe what I understand here is we're going to consolidate posts 11 and 12 correct and where are we going to consolidate it? to the west side near masonry or the east side of padroni i've not made that decision oh, yet okay. uh, we're, we'll get out in the field and have a look at what would be the i, I think uh we're really getting good data from as it, all the applications come in and after we uh, contact additional businesses and uh see where the additional signs of the businesses that have responded already where they would like to go then we probably get a better idea of what would make the most sense uh, as far as the location okay and then you said you'd sent out <clears throat> 40 or 72 contracts and had 40 applications is, or you made 72 contacts and had 40 applications that's roughly correct that's correct so that's really I mean, that's very significant that's 55 percent penetration but I, I want to make sure I understood because I, I read 121 posts had been basically applied for at this point in time but you gave me a different number at the beginning I didn't write it down as a 150 yeah and that the numbers you were getting were uh, as of the time of the writing of the staff report and yes. additional applications came in after that and so the, the latest numbers are the ones the higher ones yeah. 150 so so the total available spaces is 264 that's 11 times 12 times 2 right 11 signs 12 posts to two sides well those are total signs okay so uh, the the issue is on some of the posts we have one side of the post 
because of the direction it's headed is we're getting a lot and then we've got a couple that um, oh i see if they're on one end of town you don't want to go that yeah direction. there's nothing got, okay the other way then so we, we might get a I'll lot more withdraw. exposure on one side than the other and yeah. got it so although there would be theoretically 264 available units you wouldn't necessarily sell the 11 going the direction north out of town on the north side of vintage that's or, correct yeah or uh what are the and right some of them, uh, this is this is strictly businesses at this point that are interested in plaques. We will be uh, adding some plaques for walking distance and uh, some other information of uh, public facilities, maybe uh, parks and points of interest. Yes, points of interest. Okay, great. No, thank you. This is good information. I'm glad to see that the uh, the business communities embraced it. It's great. Mm -hmm. A couple of questions I had. Bob, one, uh, is there in consideration to doing a partial installation as opposed to doing all of the posts to make sure that we are getting what we're thinking we're getting and it might also be a, a marketing tool? It, clearly, the V Marketplace point area is the hottest spot. Mm -hmm. If we were to install there, potentially, I don't know if there's any economy of scale about putting in all 12 posts at once or if we can put in a few let them kind of settle make sure that we are satisfied with the locations of all the others is has there been thought about that um at this point i i think what we were uh trying to achieve is assess the interest and uh the distribution yeah. and it's been it's been good to learn that uh through this exercise we could do a we, we hadn't considered like a pilot kind of a po poster to um <coughs> It has a lot to do with the distribution up and down Washington of the businesses that um, everybody everybody's anxious to have it. So, um, it, would the would the objective of a pilot post be to generate more interest or to um, see if there's additional people that want in that location want a plaque in that location? Or well, my concern is that 13 or now 12 posts is too many posts, and if we don't need 12, but we install 12 and then realize, oh, we, maybe we didn't need 12, maybe we only needed nine, then we're taking three out or we're wasting three spots. I, I worry a little bit about the over signage, but yep. I also understand mm -hmm. the need for, for connectivity. Right, also. and I think that you just identified one of the key issues and there are multiple goals in our program. We have certain situations that we call the you know businesses that are not readily apparent and a good example is you're in front of V marketplace but what does it mean and there's 20 some businesses in there so they're interested um, and the other another real goal is the connection of the south to the north so there that's where that linkage and that connectivity or if you're a fan of Hansel and Gretel the the breadcrumbs you know how do I get somebody from this location to continue on the path northward um, we share the concern about over signage, and I do want to remind everybody we're talking about something that is a pedestrian scaled five foot. It's not, not something that's angled for reading on the streets. And when you talk about going, you know, we're basically talking in core areas, one a block letting you know, and then you at the other end of the block so that you get there, you know there's still something going. So that's where the consolidation is coming when we're seeing that. Um, but from you, you asked a very good question about economy of scale. Unfortunately for us, because of the actual size of this program, reducing it actually has the potential to increase the cost because, believe it or not, even though this seems like a large program for us, it does not trigger large quantity production orders from the manufacturers. So from a standpoint of staff, the amount of energy we're putting into, it really doesn't distribute. And I also do want to echo what Bob is saying. We have a you know um, significant, probably 80 percent interest level demonstrated at North Yountville, <coughs> approximately 75 percent coming out of the, the V marketplace. We know we have other people that have, in previous conversations with us, told us they were interested, but they haven't completed an application, which is why Bob has indicated we will make a, a full. Uh, double effort to go out and contact businesses that haven't responded to make sure that their lack of response truly indicates they're not interested and some have told us meh I don't need it maybe I'll change my mind and we expect that there might be some um, and as Bob mentioned we have other businesses that said if you tell me I can have more than four 
I'll buy more than four. And that, sorry, I was going to add that one uh, criteria we, we established was the minimum of four plaques. If we're getting less interest than four on a uh, side, on a post, then we will examine eliminating that post or um, consolidating with another. Except for the locations Steve mentioned that are, are the, um, the connectors at uh, Weber and, and the park at Hopper Creek that establish that link between uh, the North Washington area and the central area. Those, even though they may only have a couple of signs on them, I, those are going to be important to keep people on track and along the way there uh, directed to the north portion. But it sounds like, uh, to kind of get back to my original question, you are still evaluating as you go forward and get more applications in and, and sell more uh, blades to confirm that the locations that you selected are still all viable. That's right. correct. So, That's okay. Right. Um, great. Um, I'll open the public hearing on this item and invite anyone from the public that would like to speak to it to do so now. If there's anyone of interest, please. I have my notes on my phone. Excuse me here. Okay. Do I need to introduce myself? Or? Yes, please. For the record. For, for the, the record. world that's watching online. <laughs> so my name is Boyd Dennington. I'm a local business owner. Um, and I had some few comments here, which now I can't find. Doctor, it's very high tech of you, by the way. Well, it's not working though. <laughs> better, better living through technology, maybe not. Um, a what's that? Is it a smartphone? It, well, it's not being smart, or that, or I'm not smart. I couldn't tell you. So, um, I just wanted to make a compliment sandwich. That way, hopefully, my uh, negative comments are maybe a little bit more well received. Um, I don't know whose idea this was. Uh, to start this program, but I would definitely um, give two thumbs up to whoever that is. Anyone here? No. Okay, well, no. yeah. <laughs> we'll wait until you're finished with your comments and then admit to things. <laughs> well, I, I think it's a great idea, so thank you for establishing the program. Um, the, the one thing I'm a little disappointed in, actually, kind of a question. Can I ask you a question? Um, Actually, okay. if you could just go ahead and, and address us, and then we'll direct your questions okay. after uh, you're finished. Sorry, first That's time. Quite all right. Um, the thing about being open Saturday and Sunday, um, I wasn't, maybe I didn't receive that. Uh, my business is in V Marketplace, so Jan Fector um, gives me all the communication um, about this project. And I hadn't seen anything saying that in order to be a, a participant, you had to be open on weekends. So. I guess that's one of my questions. Um, but what I was somewhat disappointed in is I did read some language and something I received saying that um, my type of business would kind of come second. Um, and I understand that uh, hotels and tasting rooms and uh, restaurants produce a lot more in tax revenue for the town, and that's great. If we didn't have that, then we wouldn't have all the other nice things that we enjoy here. Uh, at the same time, every time I pick up the Yonville Sun, I see people asking for more local services and more local serving businesses, which is something that I provide. And um, I know that there's a lot of stores in V Marketplace that are going to be crowding up the sign, and I just hope that I have a spot in there. So clearly I'm biased, but anyway. Uh, and then I guess to make the sandwich complete, um, the final designs that I've seen are also looking really good. So I don't know who was all involved in that, but. Good job. So, and uh, I know there's been other meetings about this program, and this is the first one I've been to. Um, so I apologize for that. I forgot about a few and wasn't informed about some others. So, but I'll be here from from here on out. I wish some of the other business owners would come as well and show support. But anyway, I'm here. That's all. Great. Thanks. Thank you very much for your your comments. And I'll ask staff to address those once in case anyone else from the public is speaking. But we'll come back and answer. I know that uh, we can answer at least a couple of your, your comments for sure. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Any other members like to comment? If not, I'll, go, I'll close the public hearing. And uh, I'll just invite Bob to answer. Uh, one, had, one question had to do with the priority of business types. And I know that had been an issue throughout the planning process. And then also, if uh, you want to take credit for this entire program, uh, I know it's been a, a kind of a group effort, both with business and, and staff, but if you could maybe just address a couple of those public concerns. 
Yes, the, the program was designed to uh, assist mainly visitors to um, where businesses are located rather than um, be a form of um, advertising, if you, if you will. Um, at, but I'll, overriding that, uh, we'll say the numbers, uh, distribution of the locations of requested signs would look like we're going to be able to accommodate all those who have submitted an application and I have your application um, so it's in the in the mix right now we going in anticipated that um, businesses that are perhaps not open on weekends or businesses that are essentially offices would be on a second tier and that's the way the ordinance is structured and still is um, giving priority over uh, those types of businesses to those that are open more and more of interest to maybe the visitor um, but nevertheless they they looks as though we're going to be able to supply have a supply available for all those who've submitted applications at this point and to address the concern about the requirement for weekend uh, business is there a specific thought to you, know, you touched on why that is that um, this isn't necessarily just an extension of business signage but is there, from the conversations at all the meetings, uh, you came to that conclusion for a reason? It was, uh, yeah, linked to that. And, however, um, we would also recognize that the tier two businesses, some of them may not be open on weekends, and, um, and it, that's why we added the exception clause in number five, B5. I, I do like to use an opportunity to clarify. Bob's comments are, I think we should clarify, we presented several different models and did a number of research, as some of you are aware, on other programs, and the merchants indicated the things that they were interested in. These are actually policy recommendations in the program that came out of the merchant focus group in terms of a, a tiering priority. So um, from our perspective, we're trying to respect the feedback that those organizations or those members provided and again there is a clause in our provision that has exceptions that allows for real estate it, it gives us an ability to insure programs but that was um, you're correct that is a deliberate intention in terms of the tiering was a, a tier one and two based on the uh, feedback from the business focus group i think the important thing to take away from the public comment is it's not a prohibition for non-weekend businesses, but it is, there is a, a priority system that's been proposed here, and so it would be a lower, to, uh, a lower level of the priority to have uh, weekday-only businesses. And, uh, but there is that, that point made in uh, B5 that addresses exceptions to the criteria may be considered. So an exception being a Monday through Friday business and a uh, non-visitor based business can certainly be um, included. I think those were, did that cover all your comments? Yes. More thumbs up, good. That's, oh, and, and I think uh, Bob and the rest of, uh, and Sandra get a lot of our credit for doing this and, and some of our business owners have stepped forward and, and helped partner with you on, on making this all come together. So they're the ones that get the credit. But we, of course, take the credit up here uh, publicly. Can, can uh, I ask any an, other? another yeah. question based on that discussion? So if a, a second-tier business gets approved because it's first come, first serve, and there's room, there's no provision here that they're going to get knocked out if a Tier 1 comes in. No. It, once, the, once they're in the program, they okay. purchase their signs, they're, they're in. And as long as they pay their bills, they're good. Right. Okay. And there, there is always the opportunity that if there are unused blades, that once the, all the applications are satisfied, uh, additional blades could be purchased. Is that accurate? That is correct, yes. So far, we've only received two Tier 2 applications, so okay. not a big uh, demand from, from that tier. And we're really learning as we go. So we're, you know, it's good that you're giving us some of this feedback. Mm -hmm. uh, and we got a lot of good feedback from the business community in, in the meetings we've had. But uh, we're just trying to make everybody happy 
and uh, we're still learning how to best do that also. So, um, I'll return the conversation back to council. Is there any other discussion on this item? Is there a motion? Uh, we have two parts to this item. The first would be the introduction and first reading of the ordinance, and there's been a proposal by Councilmember Moeller to modify the language of uh, B4. B4 to state businesses must be open either Saturday or Sunday. Should it be the businesses? Should be or shall be? If we want to make it. Yes, you should. Uh, the business shall be open on okay, that's what I'm thinking Saturday too. or Sunday. Okay. So it'll change. Okay, so that would be my amendment to B4. The business shall be open at least Saturday <laughs> or Sunday because we have the exception rule in number five that we just took care of. Would you like to make that uh, adjustment in the form of a motion? I would. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to move to approve um, or ordinance number 406-12, an ordinance of the Town Council of the Town of Yonville, amending the Yonville Municipal Code, Title 17, Chapter 17.92 signs, to add addition 17, add section 17.92.120, Establishing regulations for the wayfinding sign program with the modification um, to section B4 that businesses shall be open on at least Saturday or Sunday. Second. We do need a 3 0 vote for this item. Yes, and that's a motion to introduce and waive the reading, right? Introduce Correct. and waive the reading. And uh, that's your motion. That's my motion. Correct. Thank you. So a motion to introduce and waive that reading with the amended language. There's been a motion and a second, and we do re require a 3-0 vote on this. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There's your 3-0 vote. Now we need to discuss the second part of this item, the master fee schedule. Uh, Bob, did you want to touch on that item in particular? Uh, briefly, the, the ordinance um, establishes a structure to the program uh, that has a process that involves town staff at the uh, both the initial application review to ensure the criteria of the program and the guidelines are met and then also there's a annual uh, subscription renewal fee that um, is uh, applied and that's an administrative effort as well and that there's a additional uh, maintenance efforts by staff that uh, and also paying down some of the hard cost of the post that that money will be applied towards. Those two fees need to be uh, added to the master fee schedule. And that's the, what the purpose of the resolution is. And um, I'm gonna treat this as a separate public hearing. So I'll open the public hearing and invite members of the public to comment on the fee schedule portion of this item if anyone is interested. And if not, I'll close the public hearing portion of this particular item. Uh, are there, first of all, I should have asked, are there questions of uh, staff about the second None. report? And if not, is there a motion? I'll make a motion. A motion, uh, make a, I'll move to approve resolution 3044-12, approving an amendment to the master fee schedule to add program fees for the wayfinding sign program. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous vote as well. Thank you very much. And thanks to staff uh, for the many hours and meetings uh, that you have done and thanks to the business community represented by our one individual tonight doctor thank you for being here but um, uh, thanks also for the business community to help us craft this uh, new ordinance that will come back to us for formal adoption at a future date we're going to move on to administrative items now. Recycled water project. Uh, we'll start off with a staff report. Uh, very briefly, as you all know, the recycled water project has been a, a long-term ongoing project. One of the vehicles we're looking at is for our financing is a low-interest loan from the uh, state revolving loan fund from the Department of Finance as it's administered by the Regional Water Quality Control Board and they require a rather extensive and involved application process and one of which is a you all have to approve 
staff's ability to apply for and complete the application and the resolution before you is that such resolution authorizing the town manager to pursue it's not an obligation you're not entering into the loan but this is simply to provide the direction for staff and I will point out that this is a follow-up item and it is consistent with the direction that the council has given with regard to this capital improvement project to secure the financing so it's a necessary first step towards that goal okay any questions of staff uh, town manager councilmember Moeller I, I just want some clarification on some of the numbers so the proposal is to um, you're going to be requesting a loan amount of about 3.4 million and then I was confused because in the resolution it's up to 5 million but um, in the staff report it wasn't to exceed 2.4 million so if you could put all those numbers for me together I'd appreciate it the, the real short answer to that one is we put the most extreme on the application because you can reduce the amount and our goal based on the previous council direction is indeed to to have the preferred project when we ultimately approve it be either the project at minimum project at 1.4 million or the 2.4 but for the application process what we need to do is identify the outcome and we don't want to be in a situation where we get approved for say 1.4 million and we ultimately need the 2.4 because that's how they look at it and there is also the potential depending on the grant structure of some recovery for the approaching 900,000 that we've already uh, encumbered and spent for the design and planning so that's why you see that number moving up a bit it's it's calculating all of the costs potentially the other one is that um, with the federal government and the US Bureau of Reclamation we may get grants in the future and so that would reduce that amount um, but until Congress takes action and appropriates funding we can't count on that money um, but we did learn that um, we could build the project and then in the future Congress could put money could be five or more years later some projects <clears throat> around the barrier recycle water coalition have, have had projects they built and then Congress appropriated the money in the future so that would reduce the amount of money that would we'd have for the loan so the the loan is 3.4 you maximizing it to capture the high end that we really don't want to go to 2.4 right. plus the 900 you spent therefore it's three, three four okay so that uh, and so then you wrote the resolution to cover 5 million to take care of another 1.4 million that you might apply for in the future well the five were we don't anticipate we'd ever go that high but that's sort of just to give let them know there's a cap that we're not going to go above that amount because they do look at the financing of how much money is available or you know yeah. the interest rate on the amount and all you will bring we will bring back and again right. the five million that you're seeing there is more of a cap in other words there's a range when the program's looking forward and that says it's just like if you may remember about two years ago when we were doing the energy conservation loan and we applied under one program and then the program timeline shifted and we had to bring you back a resolution because we put should not exceed 125,000 and they bumped it to like 150 so we had to redo all the paperwork so again we're using the 5 million is a range it's not a commitment um, and we because will our, our target is still about 1.4 to build water lines that we that's our have. preference but this is okay. again you're providing the direction the final loan documents and approval will come back to the council when when that's been secured so again that's the outer range and we've learned from our prior experiences to use the alter outer ranges rather than the minimums Councilmember Hall any questions no I don't any questions no uh, nor do I I think that's the the point that I was going to make the town manager just made which is we are uh, only authorizing the request for funding we are not authorizing a commitment to that funding at this point so uh, again, I invite any members of the public to comment on this item if you'd like. Neither red shirt is moving forward, so uh, I'll invite council uh, discussion and potential action. I have a comment, Councilmember Hall. Um, I, you know, I just want to say that we, you know we've gone through with presentations from consultants this project a couple of times, and um, 
you know, the, the town of Yonville is very fortunate in that we could even consider going out and applying for a loan like this. And I think it's the responsible thing for us as an enterprise and as a municipality um, to be able to fund our own way. So um, I'm supportive of this process, and I trust that we'll be able to find reasonable funds um, from wherever ultimately the grants or the actual funding will come from. But this is the responsible thing for this town to do. We've got the means to, I believe we have the means to do it from what our finance director is telling me. Um, and, uh, you know, we should be basically setting ourselves up as the, the pillar that other enterprises and municipalities look at to try to model themselves after. And this is the right thing for us to do, and it's mandated. So we should finance it the right way, and that's finding the money as cheaply as we can. So I support the, the recommendation and the resolution. Thank you. Any other comments, Councilor Muller, or, or is there an action? I agree. No, fine. I'll yeah, make a motion then. need to do it. Yeah. Uh, move to uh, approve resolution number 3045-12, authorizing the town manager to apply for financial assistance from the State Water Resources Control Board that may provide assistance for the state mandated recycled water expansion project, WW stroke 0002. All second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Another unanimous vote. And uh, thank you, uh, Councilor Hall, for putting uh, the comments very well. I think you could speak for all of us on that item. Thank you. Moving on to uh, informational reports, item 11, budget in brief. We don't have a brief budget. It, it, well, no, we don't. We have a full book, which if you haven't checked your mailboxes, they've been distributed. <laughs> but recognizing that not everyone wants to go through the book, we've um, redone our budget in brief, same format as previous years. So that's also distributed. It's available for the public, both on the back wall. We encourage them to take copies. It's also posted on the finance page website um, and just gives a nice snapshot of our general fund and where our money comes from and how we spend the money that we get um, and if I might just add one more quick item um, another we, reward you can we, always we, add that we received well we've already talked about it but um, Steve likes to show off the hardware so I brought the plaque that we received for our same one from last June 30 2011 <laughs> CAFR it's been updated Arnold. <laughs> So Thank you. Uh, I we'll be changing that out in the lobby with our most current version. Great. Any uh, comments from uh, the council? I, do, I find this very helpful. It's also uh, a real good snapshot for the public to get a, a summary of what we go through Absolutely. 42 or 43 uh, work sessions <laughs> to, to achieve. So right. um, thank you and congratulations again to you and uh, your support team that helps make it so not only transparent and uh, effective but um, others in the industry see your professionalism and your quality so congratulations oh, on that thank you mr mayor one more item yes um, we've gone from very hot weather to some foggy wet weather um, which has somewhat delayed our painting of the tennis courts but we anticipate they should be painted this week and we'll unlock the gates and let people start playing out there so I wanted to so the resurfacing is finished it's just, except for that the painting so everything and else I, is done. I know that there were some concerns brought up by um, one member of the public specifically contacted me and I can't remember if it was the entire staff the council but concern about the non tennis activities oh, on yes. the courts uh, specifically uh, turning it into a dog park right so I know that the staff's aware of it and is trying to educate the public on yeah, there damage are to especially our brand new courts. Yeah, well, there are signs. They have been there for quite a while. They say no dogs. Um, we're going to be adding some more signs about reservations so people can reserve the courts. Um, the recreation guide has the training or the you know classes that people can take, teens and adults. So uh, we are looking forward to it. Um, we've spruced up the courts a bit, done some fixes, and uh, we're looking forward to having those uh, utilized and enjoyed by the public. And hopefully folks will, will get that message that uh, to respect not only the public property but their neighbors uh, ability to use those courts and other areas in town so good thank you very much any other informational reports from staff okay if not we'll go on to council uh, meeting reports and comments do we can any of us remember all the meetings that we have attended in the last uh, several weeks councilman moeller good one uh, yes, I attended the Upper Valley uh, Waste Management Authority meeting on June the 21st. And at that meeting, we uh, approved the, the rate increases. And I think it's great news for the public to hear that uh, 
Garbage service in town, trash, recycling included, will only be increasing 1.2% this year versus the about 6% last year. So I've kept a very care careful eye on their budget. And so I'd like to think that contributed to our 1%. Our Additionally, um, the um, there's been, we decided to raise the fee at Clover Flat by a dollar per ton. It was $3 a ton, now it's going to be $4 per ton. And that extra dollar is going to go into a pool of money that's going to be set, set aside for hazardous household waste cleanup. And uh, I will be uh, making sure that Yonville uh, gets um, on that uh, agenda. This year it's going to be in October. We haven't set the date yet. It will be at the uh, in Calistoga at the Napa County Fairgrounds. So um, that's the report from that board. Thank you very much. Councilmember Hall, do you have any I had no meetings. meeting reports? No. Okay. Thank you. I did want to just go back. Uh, I have to go back a ways for this one particular Napa County Transportation and Planning Agency um, update, but we are. Um, the, a new executive director was hired, uh, Kate Miller, and she has already taken over and uh, is uh, learning the ropes. She came from uh, AC Transit in uh, the East Bay. And so uh, welcome to, uh, to Kate. Also, I just wanted to mention one of the other action items was that um, the board approved putting up courtesy signs uh, for no, no smoking at bus shelters along the uh, transit lines. These are not specific to bus stops that are not shelters, but uh, full-on shelters where folks have complained that uh, there's no way for them to get, awa get away from the smoke if it's happening in the small confines of a shelter. So there are going to be courtesy signs uh, posted for people to respect um, their fellow riders' space. Um, so those are going to be installed probably in the process already of being installed at this point since the meeting was a few weeks ago. Also, uh, as town, our planning staff is probably aware uh, our next housing allocation numbers are have been tentatively assigned to us as 17 new units coming up in the next cycle, which is considerably lower than the original numbers that were being proposed by the Association of Barrier Governments. And so it's a very positive thing for us, I think. we. We have our challenges about how we're going to continue um, absorbing the state mandatory housing growth. Uh, but uh, one of the interesting aspects of of this cycle is the uh, Napa County is going to be a sub-region of the RENA or the housing allocation process. We will have the ability to potentially trade units amongst our sub-region members uh, if that becomes an issue. It may not be so much of an issue for us as it is some of the other cities, but it could be. You know, if we have a hard time finding those 17, uh, we can talk to the county or potentially one of our other neighbors about um, maybe trading that. So American Canyon might want to. American Canyon could be interested. So, And also the city of Napa is uh, has applied and their application has been accepted. It still needs to be ratified, but they are requesting to be designated as a a PDA, uh, which is uh, a planned development area that would allow them to qualify for additional funding associated with housing allocation numbers. American Canyon is the only other uh, that has been designated a PDA area, so um, that might be happening also in the city of Napa. Those are my um, meeting reports. Any other comments from council? Uh, I do want to touch on a couple things I'll, uh, before I forget. I just wanted to uh, say congratulations again for 4th of July, not only the great fireworks show uh, that the uh, Veterans Home helped partner with the town of Yonville to, to perform. Thankfully, they did not all ignite at once like down <laughs> in the city of San Diego. Uh, but thank you again for the partnership with the Vets Home. I think you know, we had at least a couple thousand people out there, I believe, uh, that really enjoyed the whole afternoon up at the Veterans Home with uh, booths for food and drink and uh, stage performances, baseball field was in full use, the swimming pool, uh, everything was really uh, clicking uh, for that 4th of July, even being on a Wednesday. Kids games. Kids games, yes. I also wanted to, to acknowledge um, the Thomas Keller Restaurant Group and, and Bouchon Restaurant in particular 
Bouchon Bistro for their Bastille Day celebration. I know there were other Bastille celebrations around town, but specifically because they uh, embraced the whole community, including our town manager, Steve Rogers, who um, took my place representing the town in the dunk tank. And if anyone has checked uh, Facebook or I think the <coughs> website postings, you could see that uh, some of us were successful in, in cooling off our town manager. Uh, but the uh, proceeds from the, the family activities are going toward the elementary school. So thanks to uh, the whole team at Bouchon, Chef Keller, several of the managers, even managers from other uh, restaurants and our local Kiwanis was also represented uh, in the dunk tank. So that was quite a popular activity um, last Saturday. Any other announcements? I can think of. No? Mystery Riders, yes, it's coming up. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, this Sunday, and Sam is also going to remind me exactly, is it 4.30? What time is it? Go ahead. Please give us a report on oh, our sure. second annual Mystery Riders. Second annual, yeah. annual Mystery Riders event this um, Sunday. We have four uh, New York Times bestselling Mystery Riders here in Yonville, which is pretty huge. Uh, starting at 5 o'clock with a reception, 6 o'clock um, they'll have a panel discussion and answer questions as well as book signing and it's free so come on out it'll be our, at our community center at our community center yes i look forward to, i i really enjoyed uh emceeing that last year and i will be doing it again this year and we have an additional writer this year which is great and uh they are very talented and they work really well together and they if anyone is interested in what it takes to be a, a writer and specifically how to craft uh, really compelling mysteries they're really a fun group to to engage with so Come on out to the community center. And we are also in the very early stages of working on our fall wellness fair. We so uh, look forward to hearing more about that in the coming weeks. That'll be in September, we're <coughs> anticipating. Yeah, September 15th. Mark your calendars. All right, with that, um, it's only 7 o'clock. I'm not sure, not sure what to do right now. <laughs> I, I think do. we should go into an elongated <laughs> closed session or something. Uh, do, we, do. Uh, do we have need for a closed session? I, I can speak slowly so we can make sure we at least get an hour. And the answer is no, we do not, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Thank you very much. With that, then I will uh, entertain a motion for adjournment to our next regularly, town, regularly scheduled town council meeting of Tuesday, August 7th at 6 p.m. It needs to be unanimous, remember. Uh, move to approve uh, our next meeting to be held on Tuesday, August 7th at 6 p.m. Second. Do we need a roll call vote for this? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> that is unanimous. Thanks, everyone. And again, thank you, Rob, for your service. And see you all next time.